Welcome back to another Learning Layer segment. In this segment, we are continuing our conversation with Joe Kerrigan as he gets geared up for his CISSP. So Joe, where we left things is that you took the diagnostic, you got the results, talked a little bit about the results, went a little deep into one of the questions. Now the question is, what do you do next? Meaning you have all this data that hopefully is helpful. Now you got to study. Right. So how are you going to study well, I am probably just going to go through one through eight. Okay. Uh, and and again, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It just sounds intuitive to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I did okay on uh, the first domain, uh, the you know security and risk management domain. I got a 70 out, out of all those questions on the diagnostic. But uh, so there, in, this, in the training materials, there are three um, main pieces. There's the book uh, as a reading assignment, and then there's a series of lectures that are broken down into small, digestible pieces. And then there's one big lecture at the end, which you should probably dedicate two hours to watching. So it's interesting because in some weird way, the content is structured in a way that you can actually sort of like tell yourself a story about the material. So meaning like domain one, security and risk management, that's kind of like the framework for how we deal with cybersecurity at an organization. It kind of starts at the top. You think about business requirements, you think about business impacts, and then security kind of flows from there. So in a way, it does make sense maybe to at least start with domain one because, again, it's it's the starting place for cybersecurity. Yeah, I think it might be the case that the uh, ISC squared organization has thought about this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I I say it, I I think I'm being facetious there. (laughs) It's obvious that they've thought about this. And what you're saying is, you know, when we talk about domain, what, what, what should we worry about first? Well, the first thing is why, you know, why even have a cybersecurity program? Mm -hmm. What's your point in having that? Okay. That's a good question. Um, and here's, here's, here's the business recommendation or the business need for it. Um, and, then it kind of breaks out into the individual areas. Right. But this, yeah, domain one is the overarching area. And it does contain a lot of also risk management, which is kind of a higher level of thinking, I think, in terms of management styles. You know, it's not something that um, that the SOC analyst really thinks about, yep. right? It's something that uh, it might not even be something that a SOC manager thinks about. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. It's something that somebody who is pretty high up the food chain has to start thinking about and worrying about. And that's why this exam is so challenging, right? It's a mix of technical content with yep. managerial content. Managerial content. So you got to kind of think like a manager when you're approaching a lot of these questions and sort of, as, as you said, like, don't answer like a SOC analyst. Answer like the SOC analyst's boss's boss's boss and the things that they care about. Right. So we're starting with domain one. Let's talk about some, like, you know, maybe obvious logistics, but maybe some people don't think about when they are starting to study. So here's the, I guess, the hardest one. When are you going to study? Meaning, how many hours are you dedicating a week, and when does that studying actually happen? I mean, you, you're a busy guy. I am you remarkably busy. have yeah. a family. You uh-huh. got, like, four cats, two dogs. <laughs> Only three cats. Okay, three cats. <laughs> three cats, two dogs. <laughs> Dude, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of stuff <laughs> happening. You know, right. you're, you're a busy guy. So when are you going to carve out the time? Uh, I, I'm going to make the time. Okay. Um, you know, recently I've I've kind of— moved away from a, a lot of my other activities. Like I don't spend a lot of time watching TV. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, I have completely stopped playing video games, which I really enjoy doing. Sure. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah. And you have to make sacrifices, right? right. Like something has to go. And also it's short term. It's not like you're never going to play a video game. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like, un- again, uninstall the games. <laughs> yeah. They're exactly. still on my PC. <laughs> you'll, you'll play after as a I'll way to after. celebrate. Right. After passing. I have my CISSP, <laughs> I'm getting on Fortnite. And <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I uh, here, here I am. A CSSP official right. certified online. They're not going to know what hit them. So we sort of have the when. And the the sort of how, I'm curious also, again, another practical thing to think about, where are you going to study? Like, where physically 
are you carving out the space in the same way that you would carve out the time? I'm say? fortunate enough that I have essentially like an office slash lab at home. Okay. Which has uh, a bunch of computers in it. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, there's only two that are there, there's my main Windows uh, tower, and then I have a Linux tower underneath of that. And mm-hmm. I'm building a third one that's going to be, I think it's going to be Proxmox. So I have I have the space. The space really isn't an issue. I have a desk. I have mm-hmm. uh, a computer. I have multiple monitors. Um, so I'm good to go there. Um, uh, so yeah, that's not really an issue for me. I can absolutely understand somebody trying to do this on a on a laptop in right. their living room. I feel for you. Yeah, because I've been in that position. Yeah, and Can't I do this I, right. And I think my question behind the question for those who are listening who may not be in the same situation as Joe, I think my point is. You have to have a dedicated space to study. Yes. Like even just the like walking in with the mindset that I'm going to be super focused for an hour, two hours, whatever it is, a half an hour, how much you can manage, and just having a dedicated space that's part of your study routine. Because mm-hmm. as you said, you're not going to do it unless you carve out the time. And I think having a physical space, ideally with a lot of windows, yes, there's real it's not surprising. It makes sense. But there's real learning science data that shows sunlight is actually really good for knowledge retention and focus. Oh. <laughs> so um, ideally, some sort of dedicated space, maybe with some windows uh, that you can kind of walk back into and get in that mindset and saying, I'm going to focus. I'm going to study. That's interesting. I have uh, in, in my home lab, I have a, an eastern facing window. OK. So in the morning, it gets all the sun. At work, it faces north, so the sun never comes into my into my office. Interesting. At work. Uh, so, don't study at work. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I have time to study right, at work. Right. Right. Uh, maybe I will. If I'm at lunch, I'll probably watch a couple of videos. Nice. But, so I feel like we have an overall structure. We have an overall flow. It's time to get started and, and dive in, as you said, with Domain 1. So, Joe, next time we'll talk, we'll hear about how Domain 1 studies are going. All right.